For text tonight, I'd like to look into the 47th chapter of Ezekiel. Starting at the first verse, reading down through verse 5, probably some familiar verses, this vision of Ezekiel. It says, Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house, and the side of the altar, on the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate, by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. He brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the water, waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Mm. You read these verses and uh, look at different commentators, the way they look at what this represents, this vision of Ezekiel. There are different opinions, different ways to look at it as there is uh, different stories we read, different scriptures. But this certainly represents the gospel. Um, as it grew and grew from the very uh, beginning of uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, a vision looking forward. Uh, and it's interesting as this river, this water runs from the house. I would, we could say that the, the house represents God or, or Jesus, the, the issuer of life, of the river of life. And it's interesting as this, this river expands or flows that it doesn't, there's no other streams that add to it. It just grows in and of itself. And that, that's the way the gospel works. It, we didn't add anything to it. Nobody added something more to it. There wasn't better things that made it bigger or better. It just grew as people embraced it and accepted it. That uh, the, the heart of man, when it meshes with the heart of God, uh, there's a growth that takes place. And we see that certainly as we look down through history from the first disciples and to their persecution, the scattering, and uh, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And as the gospel was preached throughout the world and the corners of the earth, and here we are today, and uh, the gospel is certainly still being preached and accepted. We don't see that, uh, you know, the Bible tells us before the, the, uh, the Lord returns, there will be a great falling away. And we see a lot of times today that uh, church attendance is kind of uh, a, in fashion, if you will. People being, uh, just going to church it seems to be the thing to do sometimes. Um, but we, we want the truth. We don't just go to church. We want to be a part of the gospel, this river that grows and grows. Uh, I think a lot have been said recently about vaccines and there's I think a lot of people at times they go to church and they're getting vaccinated with the gospel just enough to not so they don't get the real thing well we want the real thing and we know we can find the real thing with an open heart and with a with a, a heart that wants to serve God wants to seek him out in fact we read in Psalms that this river Psalm 46 Psalm 46, verse 4, talks about this river being, uh, making glad the heart of man. There is a river, verse 4, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Th these rivers make you glad, make you happy. The river of life. 
We cannot comprehend the depth of it. In fact, he says here, afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. When I was uh, just out of high school, I took a trip. Um, I did it a couple years, but we started at the River Forks Park in Roseburg, where the South and North Umpqua come together. And uh, it was a Boy Scout uh, event. And we would get in our canoes there. There was probably 30 or 40 canoes, different uh, sets of eight or so. And we would go from there to Scottsburg, which is about, oh, 70 miles or so on the river. It'd take a whole week. But before you could go on that river trip, you had to be able to swim across the river and back. And when you started wading out in the water, it looked like a river that could not be passed over. He began to swim there, and, and you couldn't touch. There was a boat there to keep, you know, to rescue people who couldn't uh, make it. But uh, you get to the other side, they had somebody there who said, you can't, can't touch the, to the bottom and get a rest and come back. You had to go there and back, which was good. There was a lot of times on the river where you probably needed to be able to swim pretty well. But it was pass, it was, I was able to pass over it. I made it there and back and was able to go on that trip a couple times. You know, the second time didn't look so bad. The first time you look across there, that seems like a long ways and wonder if I'm going to make it. The second time, there's confidence there that says, I'm pretty sure I can make it. Yeah. Well, this river that, we, that, that is talked about here, these waters that cannot be passed over, this is vast. We, we dig into the gospel, we get uh, deep into it, and, and the depths are deeper than we can comprehend. Yeah. Deeper than we can go. We can't pass over it. We can't see the other side of it. Romans 11.33 says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Amen. Deep and wide, we sing in Sunday school. Mm-hmm. A fountain flowing deep and wide. Amen. Another time I was, uh, I didn't really think about this until I thought about it, <laughs> but there was um, a Boy Scout camp. I was in Baker, or uh, Baker, Camp Baker over on the coast, and one of the challenges was for the uh, for, for a, a swimming merit badge was a mile swim. And um, so we had to get up early in the morning, just barely daylight, daylight got into the dock. We had to have a spotter with us and jumped into the, jumped to the lake, and it was a half a mile across it and a half a mile back. And um, I thought, I can do this. I've done that other swim. I can do this. And I so jumped in heartily and excited. And the water was cold. And you know how you jump into cold water? <laughs> you start breathing like this. And all of a sudden, this was a river that could not be passed over. I, I wasn't going to make it. I tried. I tried to get my breath back. And I, I made it maybe halfway across the, the, the first lap. And I said, I, I got to call it. I can't make it. Never did catch my breath. There, there isn't anything scary or cold or, or uh, 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 that makes the gospel unable to cross that way but we want to dive in and we want to we want to realize that even though we can't get to the other side of it we want to endeavor to go as far as we can we recently went to uh, on a camping trip up uh, Detroit Lake a few weeks back it's up on the North Saniam River near you go through Lyons and then up Highway 22 out of Albany or uh, Salem and last year, when the fires were bad here, they had fires there also. And it's devastating. Miles and miles of just black trees with no limbs, uh, maybe just a few, but just these black sticks, as far as you could see on the mountains, just all looked just desolate. And uh, we got to our campus spot, and I don't know how they, they tried to protect it or what, but this campground, Detroit Lake Campground, was spared. You know, on the very edge, there's a couple of burnt trees, and, um, but, but for the most part, the campground was untouched. And this Detroit Lake, or the, this uh, North San Diego River flows into Detroit Lake and makes this huge reservoir. And uh, I, I know I couldn't swim across that one, especially these days, but it was, uh, we were able to get out in the water and enjoy it. And as we left there, we headed east and went over through Sisters and uh, through Bend to come back home. And something caught my attention as we drove there. I didn't, 
really say much about it at the time. But here's this devastation all around. Black trees, black, you know, uh, the, the foliage and, and uh, shrubbery had been burnt. And here was this river running through all this devastation. This uh, crystal clear. And, and I thought as I went through there, you know that river ran during the fire. During the, this raging storm, firestorm, the river still ran. And it, it was such a contrast, the devastation all around, and here, uh, this, this crystal clear river that had washed all the debris away, all the ash that might have fallen into it from the, from the burnt trees and logs and bushes that maybe had settled in there, had washed probably uh, as sediment into the lake, miles downriver. But it, uh, as I drove there, I thought, what a, what a picture of this river, the river of life that flows no matter what. Amen. The river is flowing through devastation, through uh, difficult times, through, uh, through fire, wow. through flood, through it all. The river runs. Yeah. And if we allow it, if we get into that river, if we allow it to flow over our lives, it will wash all the debris away. It will take all the ash of our sin and the, the ugliness that, that we accumulate as, as we uh, turn our back on God, or uh, e- even as small children, we have that sin in our lives. But the river of life has a way to run crystal clear and wash all that away. Amen. We have a, a great opportunity mm-hmm. as, uh, as we drove through there. Every once in a while, you could see here as a life began to spring back up. And where that was happening was right alongside the river. Right on the river bank, you could see greenery start to, to uh, reproduce, reemerge out of the, the storm. Well, uh, the river, we, we want to be like that. Like the psalmist says, a river planted by the waterside, by the, by the waters, that we can flourish as the river runs. He measured a thousand afterward, it says. Before that, it says, again he measured, and again he measured. And this fifth verse says, afterward he measured. When he was already in, once he was up to his waist, or his thighs, after that, he kind of committed to being in the water. He measured out a thousand cubits. And he said, oh, now I see. There's, there's a river here that I cannot pass over. This is big. This is, this, I, I can uh, swim as all, uh, all day long. As long as I want, I can get all that I want. The water's endless. That's the way it is with, with the gospel. Amen. There's a river that flows. We don't want to, we don't want to uh, just wait around the, on the bank. The, the rivers are too not good for that. The waters are too good. Uh, you know, when you go to the lake or the river, you wait around on the, on the edge, it just makes it muddy. Just stirs it up and makes it muddy. But you get out there and swim in the deep water. Uh, you, you, there, there's no mud. There's no, uh, no contaminants under your feet. That's what we want to do. We want to we get out in the deep water. Right. We want to get out where uh, the river runs deep. Amen. We can see out uh, and see that the gospel is continuing to go. We want to be a part of it. Yes. We want to do all that we can for the Lord. Amen. We want to be this part of this. Grow, this, this uh, these waters are still growing. Whether the, the, the world around us looks like that or not, uh, the gospel is still being preached in all the corners of the world. People are still being saved. Right. The Lord is still at work. Uh, he, his power has not been diminished. I would say His power is stronger today than ever before. I know that we need Him more than ever before. We have a chance to, to wade out a little bit deeper tonight into the river of life, into that river that cleanses of whatever that may uh, be troubling you tonight or, or just need a refreshing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a, that's a, a good time to get in the river just to get out and get refreshed. We're going to have a time to pray. Let's stand together.